Alright, welcome back to another Falcon franchise. And apparently, I didn't notice, but I guess after the game, we had Kyle Pitts decided to dye his hair, whatever that is, and so did his teammate, Calvin Ridley. I don't know why they did this, but they did it. But we're going to give the start to Drew Locke. Drew Locke, even though he's made costly mistakes, he's been the better player. But we just wanted to get Chris Horn in because he was playing well at a moment. And, you know, we kind of wanted to see what he could do. But now that we're 7-8, and eight, we're clinching on to the number 7 seed with our dear life. As if we take a look here. The Cardinals are not uh, 8 and 7, but right behind them are the Falcons. That's us. But then right behind us, there's the Saints, Panthers, Cowboys, Vikings, Bears, and Eagles. All right there. So, it's pretty concerning the situation we're in. Now, the Buccaneers at the moment are 9 and 6. If the Buccaneers win one of their next two games, they clinched. Uh, the division. We're going to quickly look at a, the schedule, though. And go up to the Bucks to see, you know, how they're facing against the Panthers. And so they have the tiebreaker over the Saints. The Saints can't win the division. And they have the tiebreaker over the Panthers. The Panthers can't win their division. So... If we lose one game or they win one game, they clinch the division. And there's a potential it comes down to the very last game. Because we do play the Buccaneers oops, in week 18. So that game could decide the division. Depending on how this week goes for both the Falcons and the Buccaneers. But we're going to do our weekly strategy quickly. They have Christian McCaffrey, running back. They have Sam Darnold at quarterback. I like the run outside. I like defending that. They have Stephon Gilmore and Brian Burns. I think we're going to stick with... We're going to focus that. Now, I did finally figure out I was so dumb on how to change focus players. So, instead of Ben Jenkins, I have AJ Terrell. And once again, we are two staff points away. All right, this is. I'd say our goal should get an interception. Because if we get an interception. We do get staff points. I believe we get three of them. We do. So, that could really help us out. Because if we get those free staff points, it moves us up to 20 staff, well, 21. But, you need 20 to unlock an extra focus player. And that's kind of what we're committing to. As we're looking for injuries. Do we have any? We haven't had an injury in a while in terms of practice, so. And I don't think we got one. No one gets an upgrade either. We may as well just look at people we can negotiate our contract with. Kendall Sheffield, I don't know if I want to bring him back just because we traded for William Jackson. So he'd kind of be our fourth cornerback. I don't want to pay our fourth quarterback, cornerback $4 million a year. <clears throat> Raheem Mostert, I'm interested in bringing him back on a one-year deal. Not to play running back. Well, to play running back, but not to be the starting running back. I'm interested in bringing MVS on like a two-year deal, not really free. And other than that, I'm not really interested in anyone else. So Raheem Mostert and Marquez Valdez-Scantling are the two to look out for. 
in terms of re-signing, that is. This is going to be on Monday Night Football. So we'll already notice results of the Buccaneers game, so it's going to be intense. They are an overall better than us. They have Christian McCaffrey, Stephon Gilmore, and Brian Burns. Two X-Factors and one Superstar. We have Kyle Pitts, Calvin Ridley, and Grady Jarrett. One X-Factor, two Superstars. And they are an overall higher than us. As we hope to come out with the win, Drew Locke, he's going to get the start today. Kind of switch it up, you know. Chris Horn, as much as I like him, he is going to be our quarterback next year more than likely assuming you know Drew Ock doesn't fall you know in these next two games or you know there's a pretty solid guy in free agency where you decide to go after to kick us off they're gonna field it at the own end zone and they're gonna elect to return it and down at the 16 yard line great stop on the play now, I know this doesn't really relate to real life, but I quickly want to talk about real life quickly. Um, I'm recording this on Monday, and yesterday was the last day of, well, I guess technically today, because um, of the regular season in the 2021-2022 NFL season. And it was amazing. But first and ten, that pass complete to 27. That's... I don't know who that is, Terrence Marshall? Yes. Um, every single game I watched, the Steelers, Ravens, the Rams, 49ers, and then the Raiders, Chargers, all went in overtime. And I just quickly want to say, videos will be coming out soon in terms of those, as that pass is incomplete and technical for DJ Moore, but coverage on the play by AJ Terrell. Videos will be coming soon. They're going to be... Uh, you have this one obviously on Monday. That pass is incomplete, intended for Chris McCaffrey, but hit someone on the, the line. Um, it's going to be the playoff all cards, so ranking all 14 teams. Then it's going to be predicting the whole entire playoffs. That pass is incomplete, intended for DJ Moore. AJ Terrell on the coverage. You can bring up 4 from 10. And then, uh, as, and then it's going to be the normal tier list. And that will be the. The last NFL tier list. Well, we may do one based on like draft picks and stuff. So I don't know. But then, you know, after the playoffs are over, we'll go we'll recap the week 18 season. Well, probably not. We'll probably just recap it the week after that, the wild card. And yeah, back to the Falcons. First and ten from the 30-yard line. It's going to be a handoff. I believe that is Raheem Mosher. No, that's Steve Wesley, the rookie, getting a gain of four. Steve Wesley was supposed to be the future, but who knows? We may see. I like how the patterson Moser com one-two combo has been lately. So we may have to keep it around for another year. Third and six. That pass is complete. That's Kyle Pitts. He's going to take it across the field to the 45. Kyle Pitts has been quiet lately. Chris Horn doesn't seem much of a fan of him. So he hasn't really targeted him. And I believe Washington may have just clinched the number one seed with that win. I believe if they only have two losses at the moment, they would have. But second and nine. That pass nearly intercepted by Gilmore. Played that perfectly. Third and nine now from the 44 yard line. Drew off and look throw. He's going deep. He got hit as he threw. And he's somehow going to come down with that. That is Marquez Valdez Scantling. 
going up and mossing the double team. Lord, I don't even know if it's double team. But first and goal from the six, it's a handoff to Moser. He's going to take it up to the three yard line. Second and goal now from the three yard line. It's going to be another handoff. This time it's Steve Wesley who gets stopped at the four for a loss of one. Panthers defense is all over that. Third and goal now from the four yard line. Drew Locke looks to throw. Feels pressure. He's going to throw on a run towards the back of the end zone and incomplete. Intended for Cordero Patterson. The fourth and goal from the four. The field goal unit's out there for a 21 yard attempt. As, oh, it's a fake! And down at the five, that was a bad play call. That results in the Falcons not getting points out of that drive, but the Rams did beat the Saints, so it's going to make it. If the I don't even know if the Saints have a chance to make the playoffs with that loss, it's going to make their path very difficult if they do. Second and seven. Sam Darnold gets that throw off. Nice pass is complete. I do not know who that is. I cannot see the back of the name. That's Zach Ertz. Third and four. Sam Darnold looking to throw. He's going to go somewhat deep and nearly caught by DJ Moore, but ultimately great coverage on the play. And great job by the Falcons' D-line to cause some pressure as the Seahawks beat the Cardinals. Punting now. That's going to be fielded around the... Uh, our own 46 breaking a tackle. He's going to take it across the field to the 45. On, and the Falcons get go. great starting field position. First and 10 now from the 45. Hand off to motion. He took it up to the 43 for a gain of two. Green Bay defeats Chicago. It's going to be a loss of two on the play. Pass was for Cordero Patterson. He caught it. But back to uh, where it all started at the 45. Third and 10. Drew Ock looking to throw. Completes it to the 40. That is Cordero Patterson. And they're going to attempt a 57 yarder. A very deep kick. As San Francisco did beat Tampa Bay. And that kick is no Get good. Ready. Get ready. Get ready. Wide to the left. <clears throat> but San Francisco did beat Tampa Bay, so if the Falcons can manage to win this game, which they still have possibility as we're tied at zero, this would give the Falcons a chance at the division. Christian McCaffrey got a gain of one at the 48. It's going to be another handoff. And he's going to be down at midfield, but there is a penalty. It's going to be holding on the offense. That is Taylor Moten, the left tackle. And accepting the penalty. He'd rather have second and 17 than third and seven. That pass is nearly intercepted. That, I believe, is either AJ Terrell or... Boy, say the loop and or Deion Jones. Anything. Burton 17 from the 40. He's going deep. He has a man. Uh, but that pass is going to be picked off off the deflection by AJ Terrell. And that is the goal completed for the week. AJ Terrell off the deflection gets the interception. AJ Terrell has been having a monster season. As that was a handoff to Moser, who got down to the 9, got to a tackle, and that will do it for the end of the first quarter. We are scoreless. Second and 7 now at the 9. Drew Ock hit as he froze, but he's going deep. Incomplete. Intended for Kyle Pitts, but overthrew him and the cornerback, so. 
Cornerback had very solid coverage there as well, so. Overthrows his man again as the Vikings lose to the Lions. That more than likely will end the Vikings season. Fair catch was called for at the 47. Neither of these teams can really get much going. The Falcons had the great first drive, but after that, it hasn't been very good. Just McCaffrey fights for a yard. Still being up second and nine at the 48. As Dallas wins their game. That pass is complete. I believe that's Zach Ertz to the 39. I do not know what the Giants record is, so I don't know how that would affect their playoffs. The Eagles win to keep their playoff hopes alive. Down at the 31, that's Zach Ertz again for a gain of eight, second and two now. It's gonna be a handoff. And there's a hole, but stopped at the 26 so ultimately it was a good game but it could have been a lot more so that was a pretty solid stop there first and 10 now from the 26 Sam Darnold looking to throw there's pressure he gets hit as he throws he elects to throw it away there was Robbie Anderson and someone else in the area so it would not be intentional ground there. second and 10 now from the 26 Sam Darnold gonna look to throw Pass complete to no other than Zach Ertz, who fights his way up to 21 for a gain of 5, and that brings up third down and 5 at the 21 yard line. Just over 5.5 to go in the half. And that's complete to DJ Moore, and DJ Moore is going to take it all the way up to the 4 yard line, they're going to say. That's going to bring up first and goal. We're about to see our first points of the game. The handoff to McCaffrey. McCaffrey fighting his leg. He takes it down to the two yard line. It's going to be another handoff to McCaffrey. He dives his way in for the touchdown. No real question about that. Is the king needs out there? I believe with that win from Seattle, that clinches them a playoff spot. And for Arizona, that just makes it... They could have probably clinched the playoff spot if they won, but ultimately, they didn't. Here we go, here we go, here we go. First and 10 now from the 25. If you're the Buccaneers, you're definitely rooting for the, the Panthers this game. Down at the 27 for a gain of two. It's gonna bring up second and eight. Second and eight from the 27. That's complete over the middle to Calvin Ridley across and throw to the 48. Under three minutes left to go now. First and 10 from the 48, it's gonna be a handoff. And that's going to go nowhere as when he motion gets stopped. Stephon Gilmore played that very well. It's going to be a handoff. That's Patterson. He takes it up to the 41 for a gain of 7. Now, if you're the Falcons here, are you going to try and... That's a two-minute warning, actually. If you're the Falcons, do you go for the first down? Or do you try and make it just get guaranteed points on the board and not risk, you know, a interception or stuff? And if you don't get the first down here, do you go for it on fourth down? And that pass is incomplete over through Cordero Patterson. And the offense is out there on fourth down. Maybe they don't trust Young Goku from 58. Fourth and three. Drew Ock, he's going deep. And that's complete to Mark Lezada Scantling for the touchdown. 48 yards.
Great play. And the extra point up. And it's good. Making the score tied at seven apiece. But minute 51 left to go. Both teams have all three timeouts. As there's a hole and he's gonna, is he gonna go all the way? He's not, he's gonna be stopped at the 19. As a hole formed and he just took it. First to 10. Now pass is complete over the middle. It's Robbie Anderson down at the 13. Second and four. He's rolling out. And he's going to fumble. And it's going to be recovered by John Kamins. Or is that Jalen? That's Jalen Tubbs. They start out with great field position and they turn the ball over. If that pass is complete, that's Alame Zacchaeus to the 42. Timeout on the play. It was the Falcons calling their first. Drew off looking to throw. That's not good. He goes down. That is Brian Burns yelling half a sack. Now, it doesn't appear the Falcons are going to try to score now. And Drew Locke goes down with the sack and a timeout Carolina. It's a handoff to Patterson. Patterson takes it up to the 30. Timeout. Maybe the, the Panthers are like, we just got a big return. Maybe we can get another one. But 4 from 22, the punting unit's out there. And that is going to do it, barring a return. And they will not. That will take us to the half. There's the first half stats for those of you who are curious. As we take a look around the league, Minnesota and Detroit, Detroit winning 21 to 10, possibly ending the Vikings playoff hopes. Next we had the Seahawks, Cardinals, the Seahawks, I believe clinching a playoff spot with that win. And finally, we have the Browns and Broncos. The Broncos beating the Browns 41 to 28. We have next gen stats. Here are the Panthers when it comes down to throwing the ball short. And here are the Falcons when it comes down to running the ball inside. As that's going to be a touchback. And the Falcons start the ball. Sorry about that. I was trying to fix my microphone because... Yeah. First and 10 now from 25, a huge hole, and taking it up to the 34 is Cordero Patterson for a gain of nine. Something fell off it, the little thing that goes over the microphone to, I assume, protect it, or like noise condense. It's going to be a handoff, and it goes for a loss of two. It's third and three. It's 
the handoff. I believe that was Mostert. And that's going to be up to the 45 for a first down. And I believe that was a gain of 13. A handoff up to the 49 for a gain of 6. They're going to say 7 actually. Uh, second and three. That's complete. That's Marquez out of. No, they're going to say incomplete. I'm assuming he dropped it because he definitely. That pass is high but complete. To Hamid Zakias keeping the drive alive up to the 43. And that's enough for a first down. To handoff. Mostert, he's making men miss, and he's taking it up to the 34 for a gain of nine, and nine and a half. It's going to be third and one from the 34. If you don't get this, do you maybe... No, you're definitely going to get it. It's Mostert. He's going to take it all the way up to 21 for a huge gain. Four minutes left to go in the third quarter. It's going to be a handoff. Going nowhere. Gonna be another handoff. Easy work. It's easy Getting work. four and a half or five on the carry. Third and five. Jewel Oxen with the throw. One a few times this drive, and he's just gonna throw it away. But there were men in the, the area, so it's not gonna be grounding. That's four from five. The field goal units out there. And that kick is good, giving the Falcons a 10 to 7 lead. It's going to be one yard into the end zone. And down at the 22. Give me a handoff to McCaffrey, and he's gonna lose a yard. Lose half a yard, I guess. Second and ten. Sam Darn looking for it's gonna be a screen pass. Ultimately, was incomplete. Could not set it up. Bona. Sam Darn, he's thrown deep. He had him, but ultimately could not hang on. Sam Donald put that ball in the perfect spot, but ultimately ends up incomplete. And they're going to get the ball at the 38 for the Falcons to start. That pass is intercepted by Stephon. Wait, that's Jack Thompson, not Stephon Gilmore. I feel like I've been calling him that the whole time. It was off the deflection. That's why I thought it was incomplete. That gives the Panthers the ball at the 35 yard line. That's going to be a loss of one. Second 11. Right now they're looking at about a 53 yard field goal. A handoff to McCaffrey. Now it's a, a 52 yarder. Out 
That pass is incomplete. DJ Moore was the intended target, but AJ Terrell on the coverage. And now a 52 yard attempt to tie the game. The kick is up and is good. No question, really. About to be right down the middle. Feeling the ball at the one yard line in the end zone. That's going to be returned up to the 19. The Nashbar choice. First and 10 from the 19. It's going to be a carry to Mostert. Mostert, he's going to take it up to the 27. No, that was Steve Wesley. Excuse me. That's a gain of eight. Steve Wesley trying to get himself some more carries. And Drew Locke, he's going to go down. Down to the 19 for a loss of nine. That's going to bring us to the end of quarter three. Bears the third quarter stats for those of you who are interested. The Falcons are averaging negative four rushing yards. I believe that is due to the amount of sacks times Drew Walk has been sacked. He hasn't been sacked very much, but those sacks have been pretty decent losses. As apparently Dan Daly got injured, and there's a flag on the play. I can only assume it's holding. And it is. Chris Lindstone. They decline the penalty, which brings up fourth down. And that punt is away, and that's going to be fielded around the 42 and return to the 38. And that was a 37, not the 42. Sam Darnold looking to throw. He's going to throw it down to the backfield. And he's going to lose four yards. Christian McCaffrey. Second and 13. Somewhat of a bad snap. That's going to be complete to Christian McCaffrey. And that's going to either be incomplete or no gain. Brings up third and 13. Sam Darnold looking to throw. It's complete, but out of bounds at the 41. That's going to be a gain of six. And that's going to bring up fourth down. And the punting unit's out there. Punch away from the 35. And it's going to be fielded at the 23. And, or, but stopped at the 20. With just over six and a half left to go in regulation. It's going to be a handoff. Eric Patterson gets maybe a yard as this game has potential to go into overtime at the moment. And that pass is going to be intercepted. That is Dante Jackson on the interception, returning it to the 17. be a gain of two for McCaffrey second and eight now from the 15 second and eight now from the 15 half hatch is gonna sail incomplete that's gonna bring up third and eight from the 15 To hand off to McCaffrey, and that's going to go nowhere. Fourth and eight. The field goal unit's out there to attempt a 32 yard attempt. The kick is up, and it is good, making this score 13 10 Carolina.
going to field it at the one yard line in the end zone. It's going to be down to 17. First and ten. Drew Walk looking to throw. Just gonna take it down to the running back. It's gonna be a gain of four. That was Ben Jenkins, excuse me, he wasn't a running back. Just a tight end. Second and six. It's gonna be a handoff to Mostert. Mostert's gonna break a tackle and he's gonna take it up to the twenty four for a gain of three, and that's gonna bring up third and three. Burn and free. Gets the ball out quick because there was pressure, and that's complete to Marcos Valley scaling up to the 31 for a gain of seven and a first down. Under four minutes left to go in this game. Julok snaps the ball. That's going to be complete to Marcos Valley scaling, who fights his way up to the 42 for a gain of 11 and a first down. Fox still running. That pass is complete to Kevin Ridley across midfield to the 44. Let's go, baby. Let's go. With under three minutes left to play now. Drewlock snaps the ball. There's pressure. And they're going to rule out a fumble. And it's going to be recovered by the Panthers. Drewlock doing too much. And that may ultimately end the, the Falcon season. And that's going to be a first down up to 31. That's going to take us to the two-minute warning. The Falcons do have all three of their timeouts still. So they still could win this game. But more than likely a first down would end it. That's a carry up to the 28. Gain a free timeout Falcons there first. Second and seven now from the 28. The handoff. Timeout Falcons. They're second. The Panthers are at the 30 yard line. They need to get to the 21 for a first down. Sam Darnold looking to throw. And he overthrew him. And that's going to bring up fourth down from the 30. The field goal units out there to attempt a 47 yard attempt. The kick is up. And it's no good. It bounces off the upright. It bounces off the left upright. First and ten, Drew Ock looking to throw. Off the back foot, he's going deep. And it's intercepted. That's Carl Joseph. Or Kelvin Joseph. And I believe there's still the slightest bit of life for the Falcons, but ultimately it's going to not matter. It's going to be handoff timeout. Falcons final timeout. Second and seven. It's a handoff to McCaffrey. He takes it up to the 23. And the Falcons will get the ball back, assuming the Panthers don't get a first down. It's going to be very close though. And it's an interception! And personally, I'm more than happy to let Chris Horn win or lose the game. Drew Locke has played horrible lately. And with 46 seconds, no timeouts at the 21-yard line, the Falcons have a ball with the chance to take the lead or tie it.
Sorry, someone walked into my room. But third and ten at the 21 yard line. Chris Warren takes the snap. He's going towards the back of the end zone. And that's caught, but out of bounds. And the field goal unit's out there to hopefully tie this game. But there is a timeout. It's a booth review. Did he get both feet in bounds? Is what they're going to say. He caught the ball, but the question is, did he get the feet in bounds? And the call is upheld. So now the field goal unit's out here to hopefully tie this game. The kick is up. And it's good. And we have a tie game. 13 to 13. With 25 seconds left. The Panthers still have two timeouts though. So it's not out of possibility. And they're going to be tackled at the 16 yard line. Come on, baby. Let's go. Are the Panthers going to attempt to try and do this? Or are they just going to try and take it to overtime? The handoff to McCaffrey, and they're not going to use their their timeout, so I think we're just going to head into overtime. One last play, and uh, he's going to not get enough. And that is going to take us to the end of regulation. There is the end of regulation stats. If you are either team, you do not like this. And the coin toss. The Panthers win the toss. Panthers elect to receive. If you want it at the end zone. The handoff to McCaffrey. He's going to take it up to the 28 for a gain of four. There is only five and a half minutes in overtime, by the way. So, if no one scores by the end of that time, the end of the tie. It's going to be a handoff down at the 31 is McCaffrey. It's gain of three. It's going to bring up third and three. Darn, looking to throw. And he's going to go down, and that's going to be a fumble, but luckily for them, the, one of the yellow linemen recover. And that's going to bring up 4 for 19 from the 15 yard line. Punch there. Going to be fielded around the 37. He's going to take it up to about the 49. This is now next score wins. First and ten. It's a handoff. It's going to go nowhere. It ain't no joke out here right now. Under three and a half left to go now in the game. Second and eleven. That pass is complete. That's to the 29-yard line. Calvin Ridley. Warren's going to look to throw. He's going to be sacked at the 38. Back him up, back him up. Second and 19 now at the 38. Let's go. Both step the mic, both step the mic. Let's go. A hand off to Mostert. Mostert's going to break a tackle, and he's going to take it to the 37 for a gain of one. And that's just a two-minute warning. Third and 18, Chris Warren's going to look to throw. Watch 
down at midfield. It's a strip sack. It's a bad freaking snap for the punt as well. And that's going to be fair caught. And that's going to be down at the one. Okay, now I'm just going to quickly take a ring. EA, why in the world is the team not running the football in that situation? They're in field goal range. All they have to do is kick a field goal and they win. They win. Why are they freaking risking a pass? Really? It's enough for a first down. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. First and ten from the 13. It's a handoff to McCaffrey. Down at the 11. Under a minute left to go in OT. Are the Panthers just going for the tie? Are they just going to try and get the win? It's another handoff to McCaffrey. Panthers use their timeout. There's 20 seconds left. Am I not allowed to call a timeout? Okay, so if you're wondering what I just did, I went to here because obviously, you know, they're not going to call a timeout in this situation. But I guess I can't call a timeout. Now I'm forced to play this out. There we go. I can take a timeout now. Okay, so with eight seconds left, I had to manually use her there. I'm sorry, but there's, for some reason, you're not taking the time out there. I don't know what this computer is thinking of. And he's tackled with one second left. Good work, boys. Let's go. Let's go. I do have to manually call this play because the CPU will not do this. I am so sorry if this ruins it for you. But this is the game. I'm not going to touch anything. And it's incomplete. That is going to do it. So this game ends in a tie. And I believe in the instance of a tie here, the Buccaneers will win the division. Looking at the player stats, Drew Locke, 12 for 24, 181. One touchdown, three interceptions. Even if we can't win a division, if we're somehow eliminated from the playoffs, we're starting Chris Horn. I do not want to ever see Drew Locke on this team again after this season. Sam Darnold, 9 for 23, 77 yards, zero touchdowns, two interceptions. Chris Horn, 2 for 6, 21 yards, nothing. Chris McCaffrey was 24 for 7. 2.3 average on the touchdown. Raheem Mostert, 17 for 57, 3.3 average. Cordero Patterson, 4 for 24, 6 more no average. Steve Wesley, 3 for 11, 3.6 average. Receiving, Zach Ertz, 4 for 29. MVS, 4 for 97 and a touchdown. Captain Ridley, 3 for 60. Cordero Patterson, 2 for 3. Christian McCaffrey, 2 for 15. Olama Zedekias, 2 for 17. Kyle Pitts, 2 for 21. Ben Jenkins, 1 for 4. Terrence Marshall, 1 for 11. Robbie Anderson, 1 for 6. And DJ Moore. 1 for 16. Blocking. Sacks. Two sacks well by Mike Remmers and Justin Murray. One sack by Jalen Mayfield, Matt Paradis, Den Staley, and Matt Hennessy. Sean Reddick with two and a half sacks. Brady Jarrett with two sacks. One and a half sacks for Brian Burns. One sack for Morgan Fox and Sheldon Rankins. Two interceptions for A.J. Terrell. One for Dante Jackson and one for Shaq Thompson. Kicking wise, Young Oak. Both teams were two for three. Both were perfect on extra points. Uh, Joey Sly missed a 40 to 49 yarder, and Young Goku missed a 50 plus yarder.
Punting, Joseph Carlton was 6 for 253, 42.1 average. Presley Harvin was 4 for 183, 45.7 average. Kick return, Jason Huntley was 5 for 158, 31.6 average. Cordero Preston was 2 for 80, 2 for 38, 19.0 average. Punt return, Christian McCaffrey was 2 for 8. 4.0 average and Cordero Patterson was 6 for 18, 3.0 average. We do have the staff points now. There we go. Okay. We can't buy anything. But we head to uh, next week now. As both teams are 7, 8, and 1. And yet, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have clinched the division. The Buccaneers at worst can go 9-8, and eight, and we at best can go 8-8-1. Eight, eight, and one. The football team has clinched the first round bye. Packers have clinched their division. 49ers have clinched the playoff spot. They're fighting for the Seahawks for their division. And if it... Are we currently in the playoffs? We are not. So that is bad. And we play the Buccaneers to end it. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Cardinals of position. Okay, so what we need is a win and a Cowboys loss. If that happens, we're in the playoffs. The, the tough thing is, though, if we look at our roster, Chris Horn, probably the best quarterback on our roster, but he has not won a single game yet. So do we trust as a starter? So do we put in Drew Locke just because he's known for winning? Or do we start Chris Horn? Find out next time, I guess. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. If EA somehow watches this, you need to fix it your game like why is the team's not calling timeouts there like what why are you not running the ball there when you're in field goal range but i hope you guys enjoyed i did and i'll see you next time i didn't really enjoy it i enjoyed playing the game i didn't enjoy who it's made by does that make sense but goodbye